Hi, this is Paul Kane, and you're listening to the Clive Barker Podcast. Thanks for joining us in episode 296 of the Clive Barker Podcast. Writer and Hellraiser expert Paul Kane joins Jose and Ryan to talk about the new movie, Sacrifice, books, The Color of Madness, Darkness and Shadows, and other projects this prolific creator has going on. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination Shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Up to 50% of the proceeds will support the program where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.cliveparkercast.com to find links to videos and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Check out his newest painting, The Good Listener, shared on our Facebook page or on his Etsy shop. All right, welcome. This is episode 296 of the Clive Barker podcast, and we have a uh, returning guest, Paul Kane, uh, to talk about uh, the, the new movie coming out based on his short story, Sacrifice. Uh, the short story is called Men of the Cloth, and uh, and all this other stuff he's got, you've got going on. You uh, Welcome, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> we, Thank we, you. I have to admit that you, you are so prolific that we have trouble keeping up with all the stuff that you come out with. <laughs> Yeah, it's called it's called paying the bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. yeah, the Shadow Writer is here today with us, and it's great. Yeah. Uh, we've been uh, itching to get you back on the podcast, and uh, oh, this was a great oh, time because that. Sacrifice came out recently, a movie with Barbara mm-hmm. Crampton, and I, I I watched it, and Ryan and we actually have been trading a little bit of impressions about it, and it and it's based on your short uh, Men of the Cloth, which is part of a, a companion collection called the color of madness right yeah that's, that's right yeah yeah i mean it's, it's a kind of a tie-in um thing that we brought out when that was the name of the film it was going to be the color of madness and then it got changed to sacrifice a bit later oh, on so okay. the name of the book is different to the film but that was originally the the name of the film was the color the color of madness oh, okay but, yeah. So, yeah which we yeah we kind of talked about doing a, a tie-in thing with the with the original story in it and um, it's actually Andy Collier's idea, uh, the, one of the writer directors, and mm-hmm. he said, "Well, we should bring bring something out. You know, we should we should have have something out around the time of the film coming out." And um, so, yeah, I, I put together like a collection of things which were to do with like mythologies. There's a Lovecraftian story in there. There's an Innsmouth story, and a few a few other ones that have got their own sort of mythologies. And uh, some extracts from the script, and some kind of behind-the-scenes photographs and things, and that that came out through Lunar Press. So yeah, I was very happy with that. This was Amazing. for me the the first uh, the first movie I've ever seen in in uh, ultra high definition because I've got a I've got a new ultra high definition TV <laughs> for my computer monitor now. Wow. And so yeah, it, it was a. Uh, it was awesome. I was amazed at how how gorgeous the um, the backdrop was on the, the the Norwegian scenery and stuff. Oh yeah, that was beautiful Absolutely. fjords. Yeah, yeah. So I it was shot when, on location there in in Norway. That, that's right. Yeah, I can remember the the guys were kind of sending me photographs, and I was seeing photographs coming coming across from Norway. And they were just like paintings. They were like, you know, Van Gogh paintings. It was just like, is this is this real? Are there any filters on this? Or no, <laughs> yeah, it's actually yeah. it lo- it looks as just point the camera and it looks <laughs> it just looks gorgeous. I mean the 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 back you know, the setting, the background, and everything is it's just fantastic. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And and I think that everybody should go watch this movie. So we're going to do our best to talk about it without spoiling the <laughs> the film. But yes. um, right. <laughs> but my I guess my, without spoiling it, my impressions of it, what it reminded me of, and I think I told you this are on maybe on Twitter, was uh, mm-hmm. it reminded me of like a combination of of The Wicker Man and The Shining. Yeah, the, there are those elements definitely. Yeah, yeah. Some people have said um, Midsummer and oh. uh, the Third Day. Have, have you seen that? The Third Day. I haven't seen either um, one of those it's... actually. So I, I... yeah, I, I had it here in my notes. Midsummer and uh, a little bit maybe of Eye of the Devil. Um, mm. Some of those British yeah. uh, 
rural horror films, except this one is adapted for uh, being part of Norway. They've adapted your story. All the beats are there, even though yeah. I really enjoy the movie. The, the photography is beautiful. All the the, mm -hmm. the shots and the lighting in the shots is 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 tremendously beautiful and colorful. And the casting and I, is great too. The, yeah. the casting is amazing. Ludovic Hughes yeah. and Sophie Stevens, and of course Barbara Crampton playing a a Norwegian sheriff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. I mean, the, the performances are amazing. I mean, I, I, I got to see it a few weeks ago. That's the first time I, I've, I've seen it. So um, I was just blown away. I, it was great. I just, I loved it, you know. Um, and the, the performances were just, you know, spot on. I, I can remember when Andy said we got, we'd got Barbara. And I was just like, can, can you just say that again? <laughs> because, yeah. You know, I'm a massive, massive fan yes. of Barbara's reanimator and from beyond and everything. And I, I was just kind of stunned. I was like, the Barbara Crompton. <laughs> That's <laughs> just, great. Yes. You've got Barbara Crompton. Yeah. So I just couldn't believe it. It's just, just amazing. Um, she, the film she, they put together is just amazing. She totally fits the bill. And uh, yeah. I, I've heard that she practiced with a Norwegian um, accent coach in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Yeah. And, and she did she did a lot of preparation for that. And I thought mm. she looked amazing. She she looks so sweet. And in certain scenes, she looks so tremendously <laughs> like creepy. It's uh, yeah. she's, she still got it. It's amazing. Yeah, she's she's uh, she's yeah. very welcoming at the beginning of the movie. And then as the <laughs> as the plot sort of develops, she yeah, she becomes more uh, more sinister. Yeah, Ter terrified me. <laughs> yeah, she, she terrified so, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll just drop the synopsis for the movie here, and then mm. we can talk a little bit about Man of the Cloth. But it's after his yeah, mother's sure. death, Isaac and his pregnant wife return to his birthplace on a remote Norwegian island to claim an unexpected inheritance. During their visit, the couple discovers dark secrets from Isaac's past. Their pleasant trip quickly turns into a nightmare when Isaac and his wife encounter a sinister cult that worships a sea-dwelling deity. And they, they're not coy about this. It's a slumbering one. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. And the, I think they, they nicknamed the, the lazy one, don't they? The lazy one. Yeah. 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 Lazy one. <laughs> uh, and there's even like yeah. the, they put in uh, lots of references to Lovecraftian uh, lore and, and stories like the, the Isaac's name is, the American name is said to be Pickman from like Pickman's model, you know, H.P. Lovecraft's yeah. story. Uh, there's lots of little moments there. He goes into his bedroom, childish child bedroom, and he he, he grabs a little a little Cthulhu, a little green <laughs> yeah, Cthulhu yeah, plushie yeah, from little, his uh... little stuffed stuffed Cthulhu. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's yeah, uh, there's all great sort of, Yeah, there's all sorts of references there. So uh, if you're a if you're a Lovecraft uh, you know fan, this will definitely click all the good buttons. And uh, and the story is just beautiful. But uh, like I said, they adapted this from your story, Man of the Cloth. And um, and in certain ways, I have to say, and I'm not just saying that because you're here in the mm -hmm. episode, but I do appreciate your story a little more um, in 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 the way that it's constructed and and the the whole mythology that you uh, built around the little city of Camlin Haverbrook. Um, yeah, that's right. And, yeah. And and the secret at the end, and the, the the idea of this this community that is all about <clears throat> keeping in touch with every little branch that uh, sprouted from from the mm -hmm. roots of that town. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was more enthralled by your rendition of the. And I don't, I don't know if she, I don't know if I should call it a twist, but I was more interested in your rendition of the mystery surrounding mm -hmm. Camlin Haverbrook mm -hmm. than. Then what happens at the movie uh, adaptation? I mean, the movie adaptation is a beautiful Lovecraftian painting mm -hmm. with all the beats of your story placed yeah. on a, uh, you know, placed on a canvas of the Cthulhu mythos. But uh, mm. but you created your own thing, um, which is very, I very do. reminiscent of British horror, British rural <laughs> horror films. right? Well, I, yeah, it seems yeah. like every, everybody should read, should watch the movie and, and read the story just to, to see the. To see what what you're talking about, yeah. Because I think, yeah, I, I think that this short story is interesting, but it, I mean, it's really good. But it would be tough to make a movie exactly like the short story was. Mm -hmm. And it, I, yeah, I'm I think having... that, that was one of the things. Yeah, that was one of the the problems I think with it was the, how do you actually adapt something as closely? You know, yeah. that, and, the way and... it's written, how would you actually do that? 
it, it's tough. Yeah, and and it mainly has to do with uh, children, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had to qu- very quickly take the children out, out of the equation because of the, <laughs> you know, logistics of kind of filming with <laughs> with children and stuff. Yeah, so, of yeah, course. So, uh, very early on, very very early on, I think they they wanted to make Emma pregnant, so it was like. You know that that took the the children out, but you've still got the threat of the, you know, the child there. So, yeah, you know, the the, well, the danger danger to the to the pregnant uh, character. That kind of feeds the the uh, unease and the throughout the whole movie is the danger to her, and it seems like she's mm. she's trapped here. She's helpless. Everyone's against her, even her own husband. You know, after a really short time, mm. her own husband turns on her. And uh, yeah. it, it feels um, it does feel pretty hopeless. And, and um, I don't want to give away the ending. So I don't want to. <laughs> so I guess that's as far yeah. as I'll say about it. But but uh, it's you, you want to see it through to the end and see what see what uh, what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think it's a very interesting exercise to watch the film and then read the story and see how it changed and what what you know things that the filmmakers did and the you know writer directors did um to to make their version of it because as you say you know it's the lovecraftian stuff was that was all kind of brought in there is a kind of feel of of lovecraftian something like strange going on and something you know unease under the surface in in the story but the the lovecraftian elements were pretty much they were brought in afterwards so uh, it's, a, it's quite an interesting exercise to see how how it was done. You know, if you watch the film and then read the the story afterwards, I don't know if that's what you found. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And 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 it was neat. I got to um, I got to listen to the the audio book with uh, a person who's been on our podcast before, narrating uh, Christian Francis. That's right. Yeah, from uh, Inside Apocalypse. That kind of came about afterwards as well. That that just sort of uh, they work with Luna Press. To bring out the the audio as well, it just seemed like a, a good idea to, to bring out an audio as well of it. So. Yeah, and you do have in the uh, companion book, you have some um, some other stories that also feed on this uh, Lovecraftian idea, especially one that brings to mind the Shadow over Innsmouth a little bit, um, mm. which uh, is called it is Think, thicker, thicker than water. Thicker yes. than water. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, it was actually written for a for an Innsmouth anthology originally. That oh, one, huh? so it's oh, okay. it like ba- base it in Innsmouth and <laughs> and kind of. I, I went away, did the research, and did all the reading, and and did, did lots of notes and things. So I tried to make it as close to sort of you, you can see Innsmouth, you know, in in every kind of corner that you turn in that place. So um, in that story, so it's yeah. I tried to I tried to be faithful to the <laughs> in the same way that I did with Sherlock Holmes and. Obviously, a Hellraiser thing, and so you know, Servants of Hell. I tried to be as faithful to the Lovecraftian, you know, the the mythology as possible because it was actually for an Innsmouth anthology. So, yeah, yeah, that, I enjoyed writing that one. Was... <laughs> that one got really creepy. I could just imagine going to meet, you know, your significant yeah. other's parents, and and their house is <laughs> is disheveled, and it's got like in, inches of yeah. water across the, <laughs> the floor. You just want to. Everybody wanna... looks very fishy. Yeah, you don't want to make a yeah. run for it. But well, it's funny it's because we could, yeah. I was just gonna say it's something we can all relate to is going back to meet yeah. like your your girlfriend or boyfriend's parents and wanted to make a good impression. And then you know what do you do when you when you show up and it's in Innsmouth and the place is kind of un, underwater and <laughs> yeah. you know, what do you, what do you say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you it, it, it's the, that idea that you know? how how far are you willing to go? Will you die just to be polite? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not to offend. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And everybody's eyes are slightly bulging and their voices yeah. are a little too croaky. Something mm-hmm. just a little bit <laughs> not quite right about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah. but uh um the way that they've tra- the way that they've adapted Men of the Cloth into sacrifice the the way that they've switched from for example in Men of the Cloth you have these scarecrows in this little rural village in the middle of nowhere. And and then in the movie they've replaced that with a tupelac and the tupelac, um, I, I looked it up and it's it's interesting. I think they deliberately 
mislead the character in the movie and the audience about what a Tupelac is. They say it's something that they put up to honor the dead. And I, yeah. it, it, in fact, is almost like a Norwegian golem. So you would, you would create a Tupelac and send it off to kill uh, someone. And there would be like, again, going back to Man of the Cloth, there's a distinct, mm. distinct connection there. Sometimes Tupelacs would be made even with parts of children, of dead children. Oh, yeah. And yeah. um, and it's fantastic because, of course, there is a connection to that to your story. I'm not going to spoil mm -hmm. anything, but but indeed, mm -hmm. the Tupelac is um, very interesting, a, a fascinating concept, like the Norwegian golem, and yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it yeah. plays a big role in sacrifice as well, um, mm -hmm. and, and the and its symbolism and the way that it is used near the end. But um, fantastic adaptation. I mean, it's yeah. it's really masterful the way they did that. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy with it. No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with what they did. Andy actually sent me a picture of of the uh, two black in it, and he said, "Look, there are scarecrows in because they were talking about you know taking the scarecrows out completely." And he said, "Look, there are scarecrows." Oh, that's them. cool. <laughs> that's great. So it's like you know, <laughs> there there is a scarecrow in it. So for so for somebody I that were, that, uh, hmm? that watches the that reads the story first and then watches the movie, that would be a little bit of a, and that's kind of what I did, mm, but that, yeah. that, then yeah. that would be a little bit of a misdirection. Yes. Yes. Which is kind possibly, of a neat yeah. idea. Yeah. And thought about it like that, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I think, you know, having the scarecrows in there, I think it terrified them a little bit, um, thinking about how to do it on a, on a, on a sort of the budget that they had at the time anyway, it increased as they, as they went along, but having to, the logistics of having scarecrows like that and the effects and, you know, especially the thing, thing that happens at the end, which I won't say, but yeah. um, effects wise, it probably put the fear of God in, <laughs> into them both. <laughs> and the <end> tour. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think they wanted to kind of just like pair that stuff away a bit and, and just kind of, you know, simplify it a, a little bit and not have, uh, you know, thousands of <laughs> dollars worth of special effects. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, which, it, which it would have took. I mean, the the tentacles and, and everything were brilliant. I thought that they were really well, well. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, the nightmare again, sequences. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just absolutely. Just insane yeah. And, and disturbing and... Uh, and chilling and uh some you know i saw some reviews that people complained i wouldn't say complain but they brought up the notion that oh you know it's just mm -hmm. all these dreams and it's always like oh it's a dream and then it's another <laughs> dream but it's all part of the yeah. the descent and the spiral of 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 uh you know the 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 foreshadowing of of someone going to the store and then they say oh, oh. dream well and yeah. uh yeah. It, it, it it is this thing right i mean if you can't sleep properly if you have this ominous mm. you know visions and premonitions and dreams all the time it does put you into this condition where it just adds more tension to the to the story and it it just brings this ominous uh a supernatural feeling throughout the whole thing yeah yeah i, I think so i mean when you when your bad guy's called the slumbering one then you know it's, uh, that's uh <laughs> yeah. you know the the dreams are going to be a big part of it so and i think I also like the way that you didn't actually know whether you were watching a dream or watching things happen in reality. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of you're on the back foot all the time. Is this actually happening? Is, you know, somebody dreaming. What's what's going on? So I, yeah. I actually quite like that because it sort of destabilizes you as you as you're watching it as an audience. I think. So you don't quite know <laughs> what's going on. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. I mean, this wouldn't be the Clive Barker podcast if we didn't bring a few ideas about Clive into this. It's like mm -hmm. it, your story, Men of the Cloth, reminded me a little bit of Rawhead Rex, which is another yeah. story where oh, yeah, you have right. a, a family meeting a new culture, yeah, clashing with, yeah. with other older traditions, mm -hmm. um, it, It's which is a – an archetypal kind of story. It's always the outsider coming in and clashing with established traditions and old myths and stuff. It's, it's very, very common in, you know, old sixties and seventies hammer films and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. it's just it's so definitely. Yeah. 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 So it's wonderfully an done. An influence. Yeah. yeah. Rawhead Rex was definitely an influence on it because it's that fish out of water thing and the American person, you know, American family, coming yeah. back to like a British setting and being like a fish out of water. This is yeah. definitely an influence of, of Rawhead Rex in that. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and I can see why people would also bring in Midsummer, comparing it to the Sacrifice mm. movie. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. But uh, the collection, uh, Color of Madness, it marries so well into the themes. It's like this meshed, intertwined series of stories. I mean, after after I got out of uh, Man of the Cloth, I went into the Saint uh, Saint Augustine Flame, oh, which was yeah, another fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you've managed to master this 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 format so well, which it, the stories are so short, but they're so straight to the point. And they just, they just transport you immediately into this, this place and, and put you in the place of these characters. Oh, it's just uh, absolutely thank fantastic you. what you can do with such a short format. Um, St. Augustine's flame, oh, of course. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 That, that, I mean, St. August's flame, that was a really early one. That, that you realize when you start when you start to put together a collection like this you realize how long you've been writing these kind of stories and how how you know how it's developed over the years and mm -hmm. you know that's a really early one um St August Flame and Rag and Bones a bit later on that's about 10 years ago oh, so you yeah. you realize as you as you're kind of putting it together how you've been writing about mythologies all this time in they're similar but in different ways if that makes sense <laughs> oh, certainly yeah i mean you've yeah, gone to yeah. these old folk to folk tales and uh you know tales of robin hood with uh, mm. uh the arrow um or or the and, pied piper right in in pay the piper yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and of course you know old mythology yeah, yeah like yeah. like uh old red riding hood and uh you know yeah, with, yeah. with you know uh red and uh and all these 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 twists that you give to these old folk tales, and as Sherlock <laughs> Holmes as well now in the public domain, of course, with the Servants of Hell, and mm -hmm. um, another story that that felt like it belonged in the same book as Men of the Cloth was, of course, Rag and Bone, um, mm -hmm. also you know very thematically connected, uh, meshed in you know bone and rag and all these like things like grinding together into like this this body of the mythology uh, almost um mm. a fantastic thing a, l a little bit reminded me of of the torture in some ways mm. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I see that yeah. yeah and there was actually the conne a connection again to clive and um the hanging in the room thing is a bit a bit hellbound you know the hellraiser 2 with the, oh, with yeah. the kind of bodies hanging oh, yeah. then. or a yeah. uh, midnight totally. meat train yeah absolutely yeah. yeah 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 it all kind of just like it's a big melting pot in your brain, isn't it? Yeah. When I hear the when I started the story, Rag and Bone, and he wakes up and he's like in this room hanging, mm. and he looks around, and he sees bodies. I was like, yeah. attic scene, hell bound. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not saying oh, that my, you. My and I'm not saying that you necessarily <laughs> were thinking about that. It's just exactly where my mind went to, yeah. and I was like, yep, that's yeah. that's yep. exactly what I'm what I'm getting out of this. And um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And but uh, Pay the Piper, also a very, very lovely little story, oh, which adds such a cool twist to to the tale of the Piper, right? The Hamelin's Piper, the, the guy yeah. who takes the mice and out of the town, but then he comes back for the children. Mm -hmm. And this one is, you added such a wonderful undead <laughs> twist to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite a nasty twist at the end as well. You, you, find, some, you find something out at the end. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he just ha just happens to be doing it with with zombies, not yeah. <laughs> not rats. <laughs> so, oh, so yeah. beautiful, so wonderful! Oh, like when you. you're reading it in the, at the beginning, you're like, "What what's going on here?" I, and then you you start understanding what's going on, and then in in such a short story, you give us some backstory, you tell us what's going on, you tell us that this has been going on for a long time, you mm -hmm. tell us how he learned his talent, how he does it, and what happens <laughs> when they don't pay him. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Right. It does not end well for them. <laughs> yes. He doesn't take something away. He gives them something back. Yeah. Which is yes. yeah. fabulous. He does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He's a piece of work, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, we mentioned uh, thicker than water. Um, mm -hmm. That was that was also such a delightful story. And then there's oh, a procession. So all these yeah. things are very uh, mm. all these stories are very scary. They're if you're into scary stories, you know, you gotta get this Color of Madness uh, companion book. And um 
well, I wouldn't call it a companion book. It's it's an anthology, um, but uh, but definitely get it for Men of the Cloth uh, before you watch Sacrifice because I did the first the story and then the movie, and that made me appreciate the movie in 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 different layers other than just you know the the story of the movie. So I I could compare it back to to the the short story and enjoy that in multiple layers. Yeah. And uh, and finally, words to the curse, which seems like the anti me, because I love books. <laughs> words and to I the love, wise, yeah. right? Words to the wise, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. The East Coast in the story, but yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, right. um, that that was actually written for a um, an anthology about uh, sort of phobias. I think uh-huh. it was something called Phobia. I can't remember now, but it was Dean Dean Drinkle, Phobia Phobia. Yeah, oh, uh, Dean right, Drinkle. Yeah. You might have come across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. He, and, he, and, um, that he did those. I think anthologies of of like the alphabetical like demon anthologies mm-hmm. and stuff. That's the, yeah, that's the one. It was, it was during that time. It was uh, yeah. He just dropped me a line. Um, Marie's got one in there as well, haven't you? You've got a story in in that in that anthology, and he just yeah dropped me a line and said, "Did you you know doing a thing about uh, phobias?" So I started to think about kind of like books and somebody who was a, who, was, who kind of had a phobia about letters and words and you know how books are everywhere. So he'd, he'd be terrified where whenever he went in a like a library or. <laughs> yeah, you know, just throw a book on a shelf yeah. or something like that, and how that might that might, that might kind of affect his life. That, so, that yeah, reminded yeah. me a little bit of the uh, of the um, oh god, Valerie on the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It yeah. Brings yeah, that yeah, to mind that. in an unrelated, marginal yeah, kind of yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. But I I didn't know that. I thought when I was reading this story, I was like, oh, bibliophobia. I wonder if that's a real thing. It's like, no, I can't be. Mm-hmm. I mean, who's going to yeah. be afraid of a book? <laughs> I Googled it up, and it's true. Yeah. And Absolutely and there's true. even yeah. people who have a subset of the uh, bibliophobia where they, they're afraid of just textbooks or historical novels or yeah. children's stories. <laughs> or just <Yeah>. magazines. And, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. How, yeah. how is this a real thing? It's like the human brain is 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 a fascinating thing. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It's all real. It's all real. Wow. wow. But the 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 little kind of twist near the end is this idea <laughs> that in the beginning there was the word, but what's going to be at the end? You know, yeah. how is it going to yeah. end? Is this just a story that's waiting to be <laughs> snuffed out? And yeah. Have you been, have you been infected while you've read it? Yeah. Have you been infected by it by as you're reading the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And what a great closer for this anthology. It's really, really amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, so you also have uh, there's an RPG being based on on your stuff as well, right? Let's uh, let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. So yeah, um, yeah. go. On. <laughs> so it's a distant gray gaming. Uh, yes. They have teamed up with yeah. you to bring Shadow Rider the RPG. Um, yeah. It's based on the mythology of the Order of the Shadows, and it's going to be a tabletop role playing game. Hey, uh-huh. Ryan, this uh-huh. is right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, I think I still think we yeah. need to we need to try to put together a game where we can play that. I think that would be great. And now yeah, and now but, I've read yeah, uh, Darkness really? and Shadows, so I understand about the Order of the Shadows and <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. So that that was that was interesting. That that uh, it, it's like it's almost like the books of blood. I, sorry, we keep comparing stuff to Clive Barker. Mm. You know, that's oh, just yeah. that's just but he's a big influence on me. It, it's well, it's beca- also because of who we are and what we do. But yeah, but yeah, to to have an yeah. anthology series where all the stories are sort of interconnected in 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 that way was really neat and and tied mm-hmm. up really well with the last story, uh, Shadow Play. Yeah, that was a new that was a new story that I wrote for. Uh, Darkness and Shadows, which is Sinister Press, have just just brought out. Um, so yeah, all the Order of the Shadow stories are in that one all together, um, with a short novel as well. And it's just kind of the I forget how it happened now. I think I think uh, Philip Philip J. Uh, Beddingfield um, dropped me a line, mm-hmm. and he said, um, "Have you got anything that we could possibly you know base a base a game around? Because they play this game and they they film it and." 
um you know they did do a podcast and everything distant gray uh, gaming mm-hmm. and i was start, sort of thinking about what what would be <laughs> what you could possibly turn into a game that was that was mine and I, I suddenly thought oh the order of the shadows would be perfect and something like shadow writer which was the first one we talk yeah. about old old stories again that that's around the same time as i wrote st august flame so it's sort of late 90s <coughs> story that one mm-hmm. and um I used to play the the old HP Lovecraft in you know, a Call of Cthulhu oh, yeah, um, game oh, yeah. when I when I was young. Yeah, when I was very young, sort of teenage teenage years. So I started to think, well, that, it's all about a guy. He's a reporter who goes to this old house, and he's he wants to you know interview his favourite writer Herbert Lynch and um, this old creepy house that could be like the Adams family type of house, you know, <laughs> out on an, on an island started, that you have to take a, a, out, a boat on to. an island. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the original title for it was, was recluse. Um, that oh. story because he's, he's re- reclusive writer out there. I can't, can't remember how shadow writer came about, but anyway, it's the name of my site as well. So it's, you know, it, it's yeah. it obviously stuck with me over, over the years, but, um, and I just started to think, well, you could do something with the order, the mythology of the Order of the Shadows. You could do some kind of gaming thing with that, going back to when, you know, the, the house was first built. And, you know, you could have somebody, I think Philip's doing a thing where, where they're, they're sort of, these people go to the house in the 1920s, I think it is. And they're just kind of, they're invited to the house and, and you know, creepy and strange things and frightening things happen to these these people as they're kind of going around the house. So, it's all it's all kind of just just taken off from there, really. Uh, Philip just dropped that me a line. That sounds really fun. I really want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Oh, I'm sure we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. And, and so, so the, uh, the fun, that book is coming book. out from Sinister Horror Company. Is that correct? It, yeah, that's right. It's it's out now. It came out about a week ago or so. Oh, Darkness cool. and Shadows. Great, Sinister. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people can get it get it now. <laughs> it's out now. That's fantastic. Uh, my first book, first book of the year. First book of the year to Yay. come out. <laughs> there you go. First book yeah. of 2021. Get your fresh That's Walt right. Kane catch right here. Yeah. That's it. So <laughs> you, got a, you got a book and a movie already in, in the very beginning of 2021. That's... In, the, in the bag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and an yeah, RPG one... game <laughs> inspired by <laughs> Call of RPG Cthulhu game. 7th yeah. Edition, and it's a Chaosium <laughs> Incorporated gaming system. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm sorry. It's actually using the basic role-playing system reference document. Uh, that's a correction yeah. there. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah, it was originally. Yeah. 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 Just fun. Just fun things. I mean, I always like doing different, like Clive, you know, different things from your from your work, whether it's comics or you know plays or and, and this was something I never never thought of before. It was a game, you know. So uh, when when Philip dropped me a line, it was like, oh yeah. You know, I'd love to be you know, involved yeah. in that. You know, see something get made. Uh, you know, that I used to kind of play when I was very young, and see something get based on my, you know, one of my mythologies, and get played somewhere else, and people have fun playing that. I, you know, that's that's perfect <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, and a shout out for the Distant Gray Gaming Podcast, which is. Uh, uh, are they going to play this game on their podcast? Do you know? Yeah, it sounds like they already yeah. did. Yeah. Right? Uh, I don't think they've done it yet. Oh, okay. we're, we're, they're still kind of in the, we're, we're in the stages of kind of developing it at the moment. But oh, um, wonderful. yeah, they're going to play it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they've been playing yeah. the Call of Cthulhu uh, on their podcast. So oh, that's okay. something to right. watch out for yeah. the Distant Gray Gaming Podcast and mm-hmm. Shadow Rider the RPG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and fun. I've been kind of yeah. dragging the dragging our crew into uh, into. Um, a role playing game as well, so so I can we can probably make them play that also. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know if we told you about yeah. this or if you heard our latest episodes, but we've been doing this. Uh, it's called the Jericho Squad seventy seven, and uh, wow. the the premise of the game is that we um, are members of the Jericho Squad. Yeah, we're in the, our headquarters are in the Second Dominion of the Magica. And we're fighting, a, a, you know, we're, we're recruiting people right now into our team. And then Ryan is the, the games master. And uh, he's the one who knows what challenges and what enemies we're going to fi- fight. But, uh, yeah, we got Catalina and Joe from, oh, from Texas. Yeah, and yeah. we got Lori from Simon Benford Fans. And, mm. and, you know, 
and we've been getting all our characters created and yeah. it's been fun. I, I was That's a cool. total greenhorn on uh, RPG gaming, um, you know, throwing <laughs> the dice and stuff. I'm always saying, hey, Ryan, what dice should I use? Like the 20 sided <laughs> or the eight sided <laughs> or the 10 sided? How many dice can there be? You know? But uh, yeah. bring back memories to my childhood. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So looking yeah. forward to my this game being used. developed. Yeah. Yeah. This, this loop. Yeah. 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 Shouldn't shouldn't be too far off now. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, yeah. Be it, it, it'll be fun. Yeah. I'll have to get get you guys together, so you can all you can all play it. <laughs> Yeah, well, we we would love that. And actually, since we brought up uh, little Spark films, we could talk a little bit about mm. the Torturer, right? That the adaptation, the move, the film adaptation of your of your uh, short story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're yeah. we're we're uh, good friends with the people of Little Spark Films, and they helped us uh, create a Cenobite Roundtable at Texas Frightmare Weekend a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, and so it, it's neat to see all of that stuff coming together you know we know you from your work and mm -hmm. and uh of course the little spark films from working with them and we also and also um paul t taylor of of hellraiser judgment right was a yeah. was a, a yeah. the main character a main character in the in the, Andy. In the film yeah. Andy, yeah 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 it's all it's all inter interlinked isn't it yeah <laughs> it's so all I, kind of I, interconnected and I think they're making the rounds with uh, film festivals with it, and uh, it, yeah. it's at at some point it'll be hopefully released so everybody can watch it. Yeah, I think was that's that the plan. yeah? That's... Was that the first that, uh, short film adaptation of one of your stories? Um, or did no, you have something before? Uh, there was a film. Yeah, a few things. Uh, I think the first one was the opportunity. Um, that was about 10, 11 years ago. Um, that was, it was more of a crime um, short story that got ad adapted into a film. Oh. Uh, there have been a few over the years. Life of Matic was one that got adapted. I think Weeping Woman was adapted. Brad Watson did Wind Chimes. That was about 2012, I think. Oh, I see. Um, wow. So, yeah, there's been a few over the over the years. This is kind of the, the, the latest one that uh, Joe and Catalina have done. So, yeah. but they've done a great job great job with it yeah i'm I'm very happy with it uh, that's fantastic yeah i'm I'm looking forward to that uh, having a wider release uh, we we got a chance mm -hmm. to see early screenings of it yeah. uh, where poor Andy gets tortured <laughs> and uh and <laughs> yeah. again it's one of those stories where you just have to stick through to the end and it all makes sense at the end and uh mm. it's you know a fantastic uh very very bone chilling story of this man facing his own private hell. We weren't just torturing Paul T. Taylor for, for fun or anything. It was it was an actual <laughs> Well there's a little <laughs> fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that they had a little fun hanging him uh, and you know uh, yeah. putting little uh, battery cables on his uh, on his chest and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of fun moments on set. <laughs> It might not have been for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think they had fun making it from what I've seen. Anyway. <laughs> it is exciting yeah. to see like, it is exciting to see like uh, a story jump from the page into like live mm -hmm. action and, and, and the, the hoops that sometimes the stories have to go through to, to finally find their way into real life, like flesh and blood people mm -hmm. ideas, you know, oh, yeah, uh, in yeah. front of a camera. But, uh, it's always like they say, like the best movie is always happening in your brain if you got that imagination. Yeah. That's why Men of the Cloth, I was just visualizing all that stuff. And I was like, <laughs> man, if someone could make a movie out of this, that would be crazy. It would be amazing. <laughs> like Just that, um, that ending of that story was just something in my brain that <laughs> it was just incredible. I think I'm my, my own worst, en worst enemy sometimes because... I'll sit down and write a story like um, The Storm, which came out from PS Publishing last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll sit and write it. And I'll think, what what are the cool things I can do in these, like giant eels and, you know, like crab monsters and things like that. And I'll sit down and I'll finish it. And I'll think, well, if ever that was adapted, it would cost, like, endgame money to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make. Well, so, well now so I have to read my own, that. My own... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, I'm sort of my own worst enemy because I'll imagine <laughs> these things and I'll I'll say what would be really cool and I'll, I'll write that, but it would take so so much 
so much money to mm. actually pull off or, or get you know get made i mean some of my stuff's a lot easier to make than than, than others but uh, mm. some of those things are cost about like 400 300 million to, <laughs> <laughs> to make you know yeah. so. that's <laughs> the advantage it, of, of books though yeah absolutely you just yeah. have to be yeah. true to the visions in your brain and you put them down in the pages as, as well as you can and it's uh they yeah. get the life of their own in other people's brains and it's a beautiful thing that's it. Uh, unless you got yeah. biblio yeah. bibliophobia of course Yes, <laughs> yeah. and then you wouldn't go anywhere near it. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, hopefully most of my readers haven't got that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was thinking about that. I was reading, and like, well, I, people have this book in their hands while, while they're reading yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Uh, it's I, I hopefully like, ter terrify them in different ways. <laughs> yeah, like Jackabock talking to you out of the book, talking to the reader. Yeah. Yeah, but when you think about that, you, you understand how... how a, Writing and reading and books and the written word has become a thing that you just can't escape in in our world ever since man started writing down words, ever since, you know, yeah. the, the Sumerians started writing stuff down in cuneiform. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it, it just completely changed the way that uh, society worked and then the way that information was was was. Uh, you know, passed on to the next generation. And nowadays yeah. it's like, if you can't, if you're, if you do have this unfortunate condition of bibliophobia, yeah. Yeah. how yeah. can you even function? What kind of work can you do? It's, it's yeah. very, very yeah. disconcerting to think of a life where I wouldn't have access to books because I'm afraid of them. Like, yeah. what could I do? It's, it's <laughs> yeah. really, um, yeah. I feel, I feel really, really sorry for those people that, that, suffer from that because it must be awful you know i can't i can't even begin to imagine not reading or you know being frightened of books or or, yeah. or whatever and, you know it must be awful if yeah. anything i'm but, a bibliophile uh, I, I just love mm. i just love the idea of books and ever since i was yeah. a kid going into uh you know buildings that were maybe 300 years old and just going into an old bookstore and and mm. and seeing bookshelves that go all the way up to the ceiling and, yeah. and dusty old <laughs> leather bound books with oh, golden letters on them. Yeah. And you pull them out and it's like, Oh, hey, hey, this is from yeah. 1800 and something. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was a bookseller myself for a short time through uh, eBay and other auction sites. And yeah. I, I've just, I'm a lover of books and that's, so, uh, yeah. it's an amazing so, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> There's that there's that meme that that's going around at the moment, and well, it might have been around for a while, but it says, "I've come to the conclusion that reading books and collecting books are two different hobbies." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which is oh, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got lots of stacks of books that I'm like, I'll get to them when I'm older. You know, yeah. I'll get to that. I'll have time to read them then. Yeah. Yeah, and but, it's like, but, read them now. <laughs> but but we're older now. Yeah. That's yeah. true, yeah. and we're still buying stacks of books. Yeah. People are still writing those new books, aren't they? So yeah. And then ultimately, <laughs> I think people done. think I'm saving these books for my children. And it's like, yeah, your children are just going to send it all to the thrift store. Oh god. You know. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> no, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, it's speaking of physical books, um, that's, that's a downer, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm a total physical media uh, fan, uh, even though you can't beat the convenience of streaming and, and, and <laughs> eBooks, there's, there's something missing. It's like, it's like drinking diet soda. It's like the sugar's not there and, yeah. and the, the physicality <laughs> of the book's not there. Yeah. And that's just a different experience. But if it helps more people read, I'm all for it. You know, if it helps Absolutely. stories survive in a different way, but speaking mm -hmm. of physical books, I was wondering, uh, so, Here's a, a book that I was waiting for a long time, and then it came out. Um, but I don't think there's still a physical book, which is Hellraisers, your Hellraiser interview uh, book, right? Yeah, is it... yeah. yeah. It's still, it's still just an e-book at the moment. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I mean, I know um, it's a super think... long book, so I'm sure that there's all sorts of yeah. logistics that uh, that are working against that. But it's such an amazing collection of interviews. What's, what's going on with that? The last I heard, it was COVID that was slowing things up. You know, oh. last last year. Okay. So um, I I don't know what's what's happening with with it recently. Last time last time I I kind of asked about it. It was COVID that was that was slowing things up um, about bringing out a physical copy. But 
Um, I don't, I don't honestly know what's happening. What's happening at the moment with it? It's Robert, Robert Simpson, uh, mm-hmm. Avalard. COVID just screwed a lot of things up for a lot of people, didn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's oh just, sure. Uh, I'm yeah. just kind of wait, waiting to see what what happens with it, really, and and uh, I'm sure there will there will be one at, at some point, but uh, and it'd be worth waiting for at the at the end of it because it'll be a beautiful book and in the, in, the, in the end of it, you know, pictures and the full color kind of coffee table type type of book. But wow. um, at the moment, it's just an e just an e ebook on. The, oh, that sounds terrific to have that with color yeah. photos and stuff. There's a beautiful photo of you and Clive right at the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. I think it was taken like in 2008, and uh, I'm actually looking at that right now. It looks like a basement somewhere. Yeah, it's the set of um, it's post production on uh, Book of Blood. Oh, um, okay. In oh, London. Yeah. So yeah, that's where that's where that one was taken. We got invited along and did a little an interview with Clive, which was on the a top <laughs> top of this bus, which was um, like the catering bus like they have on films. And we were just kind of having having this doing this interview and just kind of chatting and stuff. And um, there was some of the because it was the bit where you know the stairs where all the kind of dead um, people are walking down the stairs yeah. or walking up the stairs. I can't remember which way around it was, but uh, they were filming all that to, against green screen so they could like overlap it with the with the actual you know footage. And uh, we just happened to look down. We were all, we were all kind of like doing this interview and looked down and there was kind of like a zombie walking past with like one arm and i remember uh-huh. clive going well would you would you look at that <laughs> I mean, you don't see that every day <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. yeah so it was, it was during it was post-production on 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 book of blood um the way that photo was was taken yeah it was so, joe yeah, daly that day. took the photo that's a great it snap was joe. Yeah, yeah it was it was a great day yeah you have yeah, so many cool interviews, and especially for people who want to know more about a bloodline. I mean, we did interview uh, Kevin Yeager a couple mm-hmm. of years after you did when we went to the Texas Fragment Weekend. So yeah. that was a good a good way of us getting to know a little bit more about what happened with Bloodline. Mm-hmm. But you have a very extensive interview with Kevin Yeager in here as well, which yeah. is a absolute delight to read. Uh, you cover so many different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, Clive uh, as well, uh, right opening the uh, opening the the book and uh, yeah. talking about you know uh, the Vesalius etchings and all that mm-hmm. stuff and mm-hmm. how that ended up yeah. being in Hellraiser. And it's how many years did you spend gathering all these interviews? Ooh. It must have taken a long time. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a while, probably about seven or eight years. I would I would say six, seven, eight years, something like that, because uh, I was kind of doing it concurrently with um hellraiser hellraiser films and their legacy so i was writing oh. that and also oh. getting to know people that were from from the hellraiser kind of mythology and um you know a few of them came to the to the launch of uh, legacy so i got chatting with people that's where i think i met barbie and and nick and and people like that and simon and so one one person would lead to another person so it would be oh you know who you should speak to you know yeah. so it was you know because everybody it's all like a family really isn't it it's um it's just like a like everybody knows each other everybody gets on so it was just compiled over quite a few years that book it was it's, it's a big one it's a big book it, it is a big book might also, yeah it might also be one of the problems with it coming out as a physical <laughs> Uh, right so yeah big, like i brought know. up at the beginning because i'm looking at this kindle yeah. edition it's hundreds of pages mm. it's it's just yeah. hundreds and hundreds and you've got the clive you got doug ashley claire higgins uh play julie of course nicholas yeah. simon bob keen from image animation yeah. pete who was uh, with us uh a few yeah. months ago yeah uh, lovely pete a lovely Pete, isn't it amazing? Like, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah a Christopher book. Young, the composer, Tony Randell yeah. from Hellbound, Barbie mm-hmm. Wild, Kenneth Cranham, uh, yeah. which I don't think there's a lot of interviews with him about a Hellraiser. Um, so, mm. so that's that's uh, an interesting one. Of course, Anthony Hickox from Hellraiser Three, Ken Carpenter, who's the infamous camera head, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Kevin yeah. Yeager, yeah. which is an amazing interview, yeah. Gary Tunnicliffe. And it's it's great. I think everybody should go and, and get the ebook because we don't know exactly when the physical copy is going to come out. But at least they'll be able to know a lot more really about the, yeah. yeah the ins and outs of making all these Hellraiser movies. And you yeah. you also branch out into other things that they've done in their careers. So mm. what a fantastic read! We I'm looking can, forward yeah. to that. We can sympathize with the difficulty of putting together an interview book. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we've been doing transcription. We're, we've been working oh, on that God. for four years transcription. now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. Weird. Well, we did one. I did one with Marie as well called Voices in the Dark. And that, that was. Um, that was all different directors and writers and people like that. So we did we did a couple of those, and it, as you say, the transcription side of it was, <laughs> oh, yeah, and, uh, it's ugh. so painful. Well, and <laughs> and probably you didn't have access to stuff like we've been using Temi and like online, yeah. you know, transcription services, and then you kind of no. just then you just go back <laughs> over the transcript and tweak it until you get it the way it's supposed to sound. No, it was all it was all done by hand. It was all yeah. all just type listening listening to a couple of seconds, typing it up, listening to another couple of seconds. So, it's a, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into those books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, hours, I did, uh, I did several interviews like that too I, I dragged out my old amiga 500 computer uh because mm-hmm. i learned how to type on that so i'm super fast typing on the yeah. with the springing keys and so i did the, our first couple of interviews on on that old computer just just mm-hmm. like you said um you know one sentence at a time That's it. yeah 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 it takes ages <laughs> <laughs> yeah it takes ages yeah 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 a lot of work a lot of work mm-hmm. but worth it worth it so what are you working on now paul a few things at once really i've got a, co- a collection that i'm i'm sort of putting it well put it together and when that should be coming out any uh next few months something like that but i can't really say too much at the moment so there's a collection sure. of short fiction so if, if you like the short like short stories yeah. if you like my short stories then that's another one coming out um, and I'm currently rewriting and editing the third P.L. Kane book, uh-huh. which is H.Q. HarperCollins. Uh, they're the thrillers. They're the thriller side of, of what I do, really. And, so, um, so you, you, which you slightly again, change your name based on what uh, genre of, of books you're writing in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I took out the two middle letters <laughs> Yeah. for, for P.L. Because <laughs> I saw there so, was also um, like P.B. Kane, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the YA. That's oh, the YA okay. side of things. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. P- your your nom de plume. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my nom de plumes. <laughs> but there is actually a link with the, the third book, the third thriller, and um, I mean I can't talk talk too much about it, but there is kind of a folk. There's a folk horror element to it, so oh. it, there's a there there are some parallels to Men of the Cloth and Sacrifice, mm. and oh, cool. you know if you like that, that kind of stuff, the the third thriller. It'll, uh, I think it'll float your boat. <laughs> wow! So that's what I'm kind of hip deep in doing at the moment is re- rewrites and edits on on that one, and uh, hopefully just should be coming out sort of around summertime. Um, I'm not, not entirely sure exactly when, but it'll be around the summer summery. So it'll it'll be set in summer as well. So it's as all the good folk <laughs> folk yeah. horror type thrillers are. <laughs> You know, like Wicker Man and all that that kind of wow, thing. It's all yeah. over the su- over the summer months, isn't it? So, be a good time to bring out something like that. Um, I was trying to think what else I've got on the, on at the moment. What I'm working on at the moment. All all kinds of things, really. A lot of things that I can't talk about. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's understandable. And all, and all these projects, like the game that's being developed mm, and all yeah. that stuff. So, but what about Marie? Yeah. What's what's in the queue for uh, for your wife? Marie's got a novel coming out um she just sold a novel to silver shamrock oh called, wonderful called celeste yeah that's coming january january it's Jan- january yeah so uh that's something to look forward to yeah first awesome. first novel coming out yeah so, the last uh, book was the anthology cursed right yeah yeah we did yeah. that was the last the last actual time we were out doing any events was <laughs> it had yeah the right name, 2019 it? september <laughs> yep yeah, so it was um, it was about a year ago we did a signing at Forbidden Planet, and then we haven't really been out <laughs> much oh, wow. since. Then. <laughs> oh my gosh! So yeah, so yeah, we we put put that one together. I think was it the last ghost? That was from Luna, wasn't it? That was a last collection. Ghost, uh, stories. That was last January, I think. Was it last January? Yeah, yeah. So about a year ago for that one. So yeah, it'd be nice to. And I ha- I have having read. Celeste, it's a cracking book. It's, it's an absolutely brilliant book. So everybody go out and buy it. <laughs> oh yeah, Celeste. We'll uh, Celeste. we'll put a, a link to that. It's uh, is it available from what publishing company? Uh, it's Silver Shamrock. Silver so Shamrock. Should, yes. Yeah, you should be able to find them quite easily. 
Um, I think a, a, a story hope. about a pandemic is is about due from Paul Kane, don't you think? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think too real. <laughs> yeah, I think I did all that about ten ten years ago oh, with the God. Robin Hoods. <laughs> so, oh, so gosh. Got that out of my system. <laughs> I have to get into yeah. those. So is that like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing? Is uh... yeah, yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a virus. It's a virus. <laughs> oh, I see. So, yeah. Oh, I need to get into uh, that. I need to get into Arrow. Um, yeah, have, it's, it's a trilogy, the, correct? It's a trilogy of novels, and then there was one novella afterwards that that got written. It was kind of a follow follow up novella called Flaming Arrow. Okay. Um, but the, there's an omnibus called Hooded Man, which is all three novels. So that's. Uh, but it is very close to what what was going on. It was almost like one of those novels playing out in front of us oh, no. <laughs> last year, you know, this time last year. So it was like, oh, this is a bit like, you know, the, the Afterblight Chronicles, which was, you know, part of the, the mythology that it was. I was writing these things for Rebellion and Abaddon books. And uh, in fact, one of my, my friends, Scott Andrews, wrote mm -hmm. a few books called Schools Out. And um, there's a film just been made of one of those called Schools Out Forever. Uh, which is available <laughs> online. You can is it, is stream that it online. Is based on the Alice Cooper song? <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. <laughs> so that's, again, that's set in the, that's the virus happening and, you know, what happens to the people who survive the virus and, you know, don't get the virus who are, who are immune and everything. And uh, Anthony Head uh, is actually in that and he was being interviewed uh, when, when this um, came out in February and, they were saying, is it really weird to, to see this now? Because the film is basically what, like what was happening this time last year. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You know, and school uh, was out for almost a year. Yeah. School was out, yeah. yeah. School, well, it's only, they've only just gone back over <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're here, trying. Yeah. They're trying. They're they yeah. they really are trying to pretend like everything is back to normal. But you know, I mean, I've I've seen the stuff that's going on here. About nine states are back on the rise in cases, and I know that some countries in Europe are already seeing an influx of new cases. It's like, hopefully, with all this vaccination campaign that's going on, that we can come out the other side of this soon. Yeah, like I said, yeah. I'm I'm that's getting my jab. Yeah. But uh, kind of yeah. normality, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and but then it one was day... like it was was actually like one of one of those novels or one of those those uh... films just that ha happening around. I mean, <laughs> we came back from London uh, about a year ago this time last year and walked through at St Pancras and it was just like there was nobody there, and mm -hmm. this was before the lockdown, so it was like this is really eerie, you know, walking through St yeah. Pancras. It was a bit. Kind of like one of your one of your novels that you've been writing, you almost feel like it's a it's a bit kind of like well you know it serves you right for writing this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. I, oh, no. I, I was just you know how we can see like our memories on Facebook from a year and two ago, and 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 sometimes they bring this up. And I saw some memories that I had posted like back in March of of 2020, and it was like pictures of like Piccadilly Circus completely empty or, you know, other cities, downtowns completely vacant of people when, when everybody was on lockdown and, and, yeah. and was actually taking that seriously. Not, not like right now where things seem to be back to normal in most places, but, um, but it was crazy to see these, these locations that were almost never empty except in the wee hours of the morning. And they were completely empty of people and tourists and everything nobody was going yeah. there it's it's this ominous feeling it's like that um it's like, like that show days, life without us you know? days later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, i was thinking 28 days later you know. yeah, or that right. uh, yeah. and there's another collection that we didn't mention but it's also available now right traumas mm -hmm. oh yeah 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 uh, book, of Black body horror. book of body horror which is very kind of clive yeah, <laughs> yeah. related isn't it yeah is that a the, cover uh, by Les Edwards? It is. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. I recognize that. Yeah. The yes. style. Yeah, brilliant. Amazing. Brilliant cover. Yeah. But we did the Mammoth Book of Body Horror a few years ago. I don't know if you remember that. And that, yeah. that had a Clive story and it had the body, uh, body poetry. I have a copy right here. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and the uh, cover seems ever... to be a guy with a really bad case of the shingles. <laughs> yeah. He's got, he's got something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah. let's say he's yeah. got something wrong with him. kind but of evokes I the fear of getting old he does body horror he yeah. does. but i always wanted to do like a collection after we'd done the anthology i, 
always wanted to put a collection of body horror stories together. So I thought, well, well now is the time to to kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do some new ones and you know stick those in there and, and gather together because I've written a lot of body horrors over the last twenty five years. So you know, put all the the, the classic ones together and do some new ones and that's out through black shook um mm-hmm. and i do have have a novel there's a 10th anniversary edition of gemini factor is out through gestalt media at the moment so that's some that, they're my two other books that are, that are sort of out as well as uh, darkness and shadows so uh, i'll just mention that get a plug in okay. for that as well yeah yeah and we'll, <laughs> I, we'll have am... links to all of those on the on the show notes too oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. I am balled over by by just your productivity and just yeah the huge amount of movies that you were able to watch. It's I'm so jealous of that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If if anybody yeah. if you can follow him, follow Paul on Facebook because you can see all of the stuff that he watches and and the discussion really? about yeah. it. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, we'd like we'd like, like to have marathons at the weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. And you just saw the marathon. Snyder cut. You all four hours of it. Yeah, we, we all sat sat to, together and watched it as a family. Um, it was brilliant. We loved it. Fantastic. Loved it. I and still haven't two, gotten yeah. around to the original cut of that movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, it was, it was, Traumas it was, it was, has <laughs> the scripts for uh, the torture, right? So it, 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 it's uh, got it's, uh, oh. the scripts for the theater version of the torture. It, that's right. Yeah, it's got the, the play version of the, the torture. And it is supposed to be coming out as a as a comic at some point as well. So, um, but it's been it's been a few things now. The torture, oh, wow. <laughs> I've got yeah. a lot of mileage out, out of that story. And uh, uh, there's a yeah. comic adaptation of the disease. Is that just like the comic script, or is that like an actual like? It's, it, it's just the script in, in okay. traumas, but it is it is available. Well, I, I don't know if it's sold out though. It had sold out, but it's Hellbound Media. You know, Mark oh, Adams. Oh yeah, 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 from Mark so, Adams. Yeah, from yeah, Hell, they, Hellbound Web. That's right. Yeah, he, they published the the disease. Um, oh, oh, go about four or five years ago now. So um, that's just the script for the for the comic. So if you want the actual comic, I'm not sure if it's sold. They they were doing a reprint of it. They were kind of because it did sell out. You know, it sold sold quite well. I think the disease. So they were talking about doing a, a like a reprint of it. So I don't know if if that's happened or is going to happen, but. Yeah, we'll check awesome. after this and see yeah. if, uh, for our American friends, if we can put a link to uh, to Hellbound Media as well, because they're based yeah. in England. Yeah. Um, and there's yeah. a first published put... story. It says here, Facades. Mm-hmm. So is that like the actual first story yeah. you ever published? Yeah. My my first published story, yeah. Facade, yeah. yeah. Wow. Which is, which is a body horror. <laughs> is <it> so <laughs> my first published story was a, was a body horror. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when when was so that, that published? Was Oh, about 97, I think, 96, wow. 97, something like that. Might have been 98, uh, late 90s anyway. So, yeah, a long time ago. Fantastic. But yeah, it's the first, first published story. Well, we had a question from uh, Ben Warren. He says, I'd like to know oh. if there's any chance of, of a follow-up to Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. Or if there are any other <laughs> mashups he'd like to do, example, Sherlock and the Nightbreed oh. or our Sherlock oh. Demore team-up. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, not, not at present. There aren't any plans okay. um, at, at the at present. I would. I'd love to do do another one. Um, and I've done quite a few Sherlock stories as well, <clears throat> just like sort of individual like horror stories, just not connected to to Clive's uh, mythologies or anything like that. So I do enjoy writing the the Sherlock Holmes stories. That they they take a lot of research. <laughs> Oh, I bet. Yeah, right. There's, yeah. there's a lot of research that goes into into writing. Um, I mean, in the body horror collection in Traumas, yeah. I did a Jekyll and Hyde. There's a Jekyll and Hyde story in there, and I went away and read, you know, the original Robert Louis Stevenson, um, and did research and did lots of. But it just takes it takes a lot of time to to do something that's uh, historical. The, with the uh, the servants of hell, you not only had that, but you also put in Easter eggs spanning like the entire <laughs> yeah. the entire Hellraiser series. I did, yeah, <laughs> I did put lots lots of Easter eggs in in there for for both. I was trying to keep both sets of fans happy. I'm not sure if I managed it or not. A lot of people um, seem to love the book, but I was trying to keep both sets of Sherlock Holmes and Hellraiser fans happy. By by trying to be as faithful as possible to both. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's great. 
Yeah. Well, so let's recap. We have traumas. We have the 10th anniversary of the Gemini Factor. We have it Darkness is. and Shadows, <laughs> The Color of Madness. Go watch Sacrifice. And yeah. if you like Call of Cthulhu 7th edition, hang, hang on tight because there's going to be the Shadow Rider RPG. So <laughs> what a treat for any Paul Kane fan out there. You got a lot of stuff to choose from and it's yeah. been a very productive year. And I hope that 2021 is going to be super productive as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Look, looking forward. There, there are things on the, on the horizon that are coming, but I can't, I can't talk about them just yet. Yeah. But, yeah. A new PL yeah. Kane, uh, yes. Celeste from Marie O'Regan. Uh, and right. uh, we're keeping an eye out for that stuff. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, this was great. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks for asking me. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. So coming next, we'll we uh next week actually we'll be doing A to Z commentaries. We'll be continuing that with K for Killing Joke and interview with a vampire. Is it with the vampire or or with a vampire? I never can remember that because it sounds the same when you say it out loud. Interview with the vampire. The vampire. Okay. Yeah. I think I typed it wrong then. I'm going to fix it. Yeah. But uh, that's going to be cool. We're going to have the review the movie with uh, Tom Cruise playing Lestat, Brad Pitt playing, oh, I forgot the name, (laughs) Uh, Louis. Louis, Louis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's been a while. I mean, it's been more than 10 years, maybe more, Yeah. since I, I saw that movie I, last time. I, I read the book when it came out, and I watched the movie when it came out, and oh. I couldn't bring myself to watch the movie any more times after that first time. So you did read Anne Rice books? Yeah. Well, yeah. I read the first one, and then when I after I read the second one, I really didn't like it. And so I just – and somebody gave me all of the books – the hardcovers and I was just using them to hold down the lid on the, on, on the uh, iguanas ca- uh, aquarium. Oh, I'm sorry. Anne rice. I hope you're not listening. <laughs> yeah. I, I... <laughs> well, I, I never read anything from Anne rice. Oh, I, okay. uh, I confess that I don't have, uh, I, I, I have a gap there in terms of Anne rice books. Um, I don't think I've ever read anything about vampires really, except for maybe old Sheridan Le Fanu and, uh, you know, Henry James, mm. I guess you could call Turn of the Screw kind of like, well, it's not really a vampire, but Bram Stoker. And I don't think I really read any like of the new stuff like um, like Necroscope by Brian Lumley and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But I always wondered about that. It just seems like they always like make these vampire lore things like to be like a huge, huge amount of lore to listen to. And then it's like the vampires and the military and there's a portal to here and there's like a whole I, it just gets too complicated for me. I'm just <laughs> eh. Okay. But um but that's great. I mean, yeah, it's going to be fun. Ed Martinez is going to be with us again yeah. and Nina, they're going to be doing a commentary track. Um they already have the movie, so they're 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 watching it this week, I guess. Yeah, and uh we have our episode 300 spectacular and we I don't know if we've talked much about what's going to what that's going to mean. Um uh, but uh, we have a Facebook event, so you can join that if, and uh, to get reminders to. So you can join us. We're going to have a big old open Zoom chat where, where past guests and past hosts and and listeners can all kind of join in and talk to us about Clive Barker stuff. Talk to us about what you're up to. Uh, and at the the, the latter half, we're going to have a Clive Barker um, trivia contest with prizes. Oh, yeah. I've been looking at the questions. I've been adding a few questions of my own, and it uh, it seems like it's going to be really fun. There's going to be different levels of difficulty for these questions and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, different points for different levels of questions. And, and some of them can be real easy, but others uh, you would have to be really like into this stuff. It's uh, yeah. but, you know, that's the kind of difficulty that we demand from our hardcore Clyde Barker fans. <laughs> yeah. The the way I imagined it is we would do an easy question and then whoever buzzes first gets to answer first and then if they get it wrong then the other two can get a chance, you know and Ooh. then and then then the next one would be intermediate and the next one would be hard and then back to easy again and just keep doing yeah. it like that and and uh, easy questions are worth one point intermediate three and hard are worth five and then uh, and then you know we total the points at the end and see who who's the winner. And we could probably do teams. I don't know. It's tricky because everybody's going to be on Zoom. So how do they talk to each other? 
Yeah, if we have enough people to make teams, but uh, I think probably uh, it's just going to be individuals. Yeah, we need to find a way to. How are they going to buzz for the question? Well, well, how are we going to um, see? I, I I know I've I've spent a lot of time on um, on not Zoom. Zoom. Well, yeah, on Zoom, but I was thinking. I think is there can, a raise hand button? Yeah, I think it's the raise hand button, and then Zoom shows the participants in order of who raised their hand first. Ah, well that that kind of does it. Yeah. 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 So that's that's kind of what I was thinking we could do. Yeah. Well, here's here's one question. You know how they usually in trivia they they offer you an answer to a question if you if you if you go and 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 listen to the Facebook post for the trivia. Here's a one point question. It would be No, oh, this is going to be too easy. <laughs> I'll go for a three-point question here because the first questions are. Uh, so the Barbarossa family come from this novel, and the answer starts with a G, and oh, it's wow. Galilee. So if you're going to be on the trivia, you already know that the Barbarossa family comes from the novel Galilee. So that's your tip for the trivia. And uh, yeah, secret hint for be... the for the listeners. <laughs> Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's going to come in April, maybe around uh, ha, ha, you know mid April, maybe. Um, so uh, yeah, there's well, still this, some this time. This one, this one is two ninety six, so we're on, it's only four episodes away. Yeah, so clear your schedules, people, for April eleven, so you can be in our three hundredth episode spectacular. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, looking forward to that. That'll be fun. Fun, and also we got uh, we'll be discussing illustrator one and two and we'll be returning to the jericho squad 77 again yeah yeah i was one of the only people standing after our uh, oh, last session it was me and it was catalina because yeah. we had spent most of the time inside um and i i just have we been doing a lot of metagaming i'm just concerned about that do you think <laughs> yeah. we're doing okay yeah well we well, yeah we had a little bit of a chat about that the main thing is just to not not bring in your player knowledge to the, your characters right right because i think there was a moment i don't know if that made it into the 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 actual episode but i met i i met a character and he was like well where i come from it's i don't like the sun and i, I have a comet and where i'm from and i'm like are you from the aberat yeah well he, he he actually said he didn't say where i come from he said here in these order x yeah yeah and i didn't realize that i i, I didn't even know where i was at the time oh I guess. yes so I was like, uh, because I remember the Aberat also has a star, right? It has a star in the sky instead yeah. of a sun. Yeah, it's a like a shooting going, star, like yeah, almost a comet. Yeah, it, it is. I, it was a, a weird thing that I noticed when I was putting this game together. It's like, we have both Aberat and the Second Dominion do that. Yeah, and but, so your but, your NPC was like, what the what the heck's the Aberat? <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, it's an archipelago of islands, and I could see it in your face that you were like, D dude, what are you doing? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> No, we we cut all that out of it. <laughs> and then you were like, I'm from Beatrix. I don't know what the Aberat is. I'm like, oh, Beatrix from the Magicka. Darn. Um, yeah, I was, I don't know. I was trying to bring my unified theory of Clive Barker to be like, oh, in the Zordorex, they know about yeah. the Aberat. Yeah, but the, the, I don't think yeah. that they do. And so, and, and honestly, if, if something comes up like that, you would say like, "Do I know about the Aberat?" And I'd say, "Well, roll a you know an Arcana check, or roll a religion or history or something." And then uh -huh. you know, and then I decide in my mind how how hard the difficulty is on that. Yeah. So Aberat would probably you'd have to like roll a thirty to get to be able to know about the Aberat because nobody does. And I, if I can, you know, go into the the. the... The backstage of the stuff. I see what you were trying to do in the last session. Like you got three enemies for, you know, three people who are outside and you had two enemies for two people inside. And then you added an extra element, which was the, the gek Yeah. And, um, and, and you had a fail safe mechanism as well in place, which was amazing. When I saw what you were doing, I was like, that is so well crafted because you were like, well, if they die <laughs> or if they're in trouble, I'm going to have, this squad of people with guns ready to come in with, you know, Lori's character's cousin coming in and all that stuff. And they would dispatch whatever was left. So I, I thought that was really well crafted <laughs> and I you. really appreciated the work you put into it. I, I was a little nervous because if, actually if it weren't for Brant's uh, seagull character doing that flock of seagulls attack yeah. and distracting the Gekka Gek, it would have eaten yeah. Lori and, and or Zoe and, uh, 
Oh and my gosh, Ralph. Yeah, it seems like we were doing uh, save rolls and stuff, and I yeah. was like. I, I cleaved a couple of people, even though I don't have the cleave thing, but I kind of cleave the pr a guy. And I I tried to be more like a wizard guy. Like you said one time, you said to me, like, yeah, wizards don't really like use their melee attacks so much. So I was like, okay, let's just use like like spells. And I was like, yeah, yeah you know, magic it, missile and whatever. The, and I, the problem is like wizards and spellcaster types have uh, their hit dice are smaller dice. So they don't mm -hmm. have as many hit points just in general, and their armor class is lower because they can't wear armor. Right. So that's kinda... that's where mage armor comes in. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the shield spell. Like I think Brant had mentioned, you could get the shield spell. That's a really good one because it just it does a reaction. It makes your armor class plus five. So all of a sudden, you know, something that would have hit you wouldn't, you know, doesn't. Yeah. So it's like a so mystical look... shield kind of appears on your arm, and you block something. So I don't know how how much we have to go through, but uh, so far I, I've I've been enjoying the little vignettes that you create for the the game, and uh, I'm I'm getting I'm getting the bug. I'm getting the bug. <laughs> All right. the well, bug it's, of RPG. it's fun. Yeah, I need to uh, I need to spend some time, a lot of time working on what's going to happen next, because part of yeah. it is I can't write too much in advance because I'm not steering you guys so much. You know, you're you're um, the players are making choices about where they're going and what they're doing next. And so But do you already have kind of an arc thought, thought out, like what's going to be the menace and yeah. where is this going to end? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I do. Um, but as far yeah. as like, you know, at the last, at the last session I had to say, okay, well, you know, that they had a, they had a mission that you could do right there or you could continue back to his order X. And so which whatever one you picked was going to determine what I had to, you know, work on next. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. So that's that's what's coming up next. And uh, maybe, who knows, in the future, maybe we'll be able to do the Shadow Rider the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, All in, right. In, in actually, in an earlier draft of that of what happened um, in that game, it wasn't going to t teleport back uh, back to the uh, to the fugue. It was just going to explode. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. Well, it should give you enough time to like use the the transport and get out of there. Um, but then I thought, well, what if they don't? <laughs> yeah, I think you're <laughs> overestimating our uh, understanding of exactly what we can do. It's yeah. uh, I think so far we've been more reactive to what's happening instead of being so much more proactive. Yeah. But yeah. when I was stuck inside that 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 place where they had shot, so I guess. The, and I, I don't mean to turn this into a discussion about the last episode, but the people who were shot inside the house where Catalina and I transported to were supposed to be part of the squad of that location, right? Yeah. In yeah, the few. They, they, they were squad 43 uh, characters from the yeah, breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, I was in there and I knew what was going on outside, but I couldn't let my character, like, be aware of what was going on or who was outside. So, yeah. I was trying not to meta game so much because then I'd be like, I run outside and I start attacking the guys shooting at the other people. It's like, I, yeah, I didn't know at the time. I'm stuck inside a house. I just see that there's two guys shooting out of the windows and I, I'm going to yeah. attack them because they're going to attack me. Yeah, so. and and I need to I need to um, take a little more time to describe things because sometimes I sort of skip over and I shouldn't. But like you would hear gunshots outside, and, yeah, 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 and yelling and stuff like that. Right, right. You know, and another well, thing that I need to do that, that, you know, when I start feeling a little stressed, I sort of drop it. But I'll say like, oh, it's, you know, it's Catalina's turn and, and uh, Jose, you're going to be on deck. You know, you'll be mm -hmm. next. That I need to do that all the time so that people oh. have time to go through their spells or or look at what, OK, what do I want to do when it's my turn? Instead that would of be all useful. of a sudden and it gets dumped on you and oh now it's your turn and well go oh, wait why I don't know what I'm gonna do and and so it's it's um I need to do that more. Yeah I, okay that sounds good because that gives you more of a chance to like consider your strategy. Yeah. And what do we say at the end of the episode, Ryan? <laughs> and this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog 
that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.